So we uh, always want to talk current events. Sure. And one of the most current events that we've covered, of course, sadly, mm -hmm. was the mass shooting in Dayton. Right. And so it raises the question, do the progression of shootings, and, and when you have shooting after shooting, does that change how you feel about gun control in any way? Because you are on record having said um, that banning an AR-15 type rifle won't stop the shootings. Well, let's, let's start at the beginning. First of all, sure. it's extremely sad what happened in Dayton and what's mm -hmm. happened in so many places around the country. Yeah. What violence has done in so many places around our country. And I, mm -hmm. and I want to express my sympathy to anyone who's had to experience any part of that, either directly or indirectly. Mm -hmm. But you know, let's, so, we, so why do we have, for example, the Second Amendment? It was to protect us from tyranny of, mm -hmm. of government. Keep in mind what happened on June 4th, 2017 at the baseball field in Alexandria, Virginia, where I was there as part of, of an attack. And uh, you saved uh, a man's life. Uh, in a mass, we were a fortunate to life. be in the position to be able to do that, yeah. a mass shooting event. We were lucky. We were lucky, and why were we lucky? Because Steve Scalise was there. Mm -hmm. And he was one of the ones that was hit, as, as everyone knows. If Steve wasn't there, the Capitol Police weren't there. And if the Capitol Police weren't there, we have no defense. In this event, there were 136 rounds fired. A gun saved our life that day. So the question is, what can we do to actually stop these types of events? Mm -hmm. And so we have done a lot, of the, a lot of things at the federal level. Can I interrupt you just yes. momentarily? You say a gun saved your lives, but a gun also puts you in potential peril at the same time. There's so no doubt. how do you balance There's that? There's no doubt about it. Well, the, you have to deal with, with reality here. Uh, you know, we've done things on background checks, the Fix Nix program, for example, mm -hmm. to expand background checks and to make sure those that are getting background checks are actually, are, are those that are supposed to be in the background check system, the National Instant Criminal uh, mm -hmm. Check System, are put in. One of the mass shootings, someone should have been reported and wasn't reported. The question is, do the, are those effective? Because many of the people who have done this went through background checks when they have gotten this. So what you're saying is we need to make sure that the laws already on the books are working. Well, that's, that's part of it. Okay. But even more so, you know, let, I, I, I could go through a series of things that we have passed, mm -hmm. and one of the things is on, that I want to see brought forward is enhancing at a local level the ability to do threat assessments. Mm -hmm. But I, don't, I think we're missing the boat, and maybe this is my undergrad psychology degree coming out. But if we don't look and say, well, what events are then creating the types of thoughts mm -hmm. that give people the feeling that it is then okay to go out and behave in this way? If we don't get to the root of that. So if you look at gun violence itself, number one cause is domestic, the others are gangs, the other is suicide. What drives people to gangs? Are they disenfranchised in other ways? We have to take a look at who we are as a society. When you turn on the TV and I have a five-year-old son and a two-year-old daughter, and are they going to see violence every time they turn on the TV? Are they seeing guns every time they turn on the TV? Are we getting so desensitized to these types of things? So I think we really have to take a look at what is driving people towards these types of events. And then at the same time, I have a constituent who has a mental health issue background sure. who has explained to me he's been there. He's been close to that. And he said, you can ban things, you can take away, they'll find another way. And he points out Timothy McVeigh, who killed people in Oklahoma City by blowing up a building with fertilizer and, and, and diesel fuel. Are you saying, sir, that Congress can do nothing? No, no, because I just pointed out the several things that we have done. Okay. But I also think that we as a society should not just look to Congress to say, pass a law that's gonna change things. Mm -hmm. If it will, fantastic. What I'm saying is, let's be realistic. Why is there so much violence in America today? Um, in terms of looking at things, one question that I've had repeatedly from viewers is why do people need to have access to high amounts or high numbers of ammunition? You know, that's certainly arguable, mm -hmm. but will that change anything? Are we just trying to keep, keep something illegal or are we trying to stop these mass shootings? That's really the question we have to ask ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we had an assault weapons ban from 94 to 2004, put in by the federal government. So the federal government has done something in the past. What the results were, no change. 
So you tell me exactly what will make a difference. Now, I would like Congress to be a think tank on this mm -hmm. and to put our heads together coolly, calmly, and say what will give us the desired result, which will stop mass shootings. In, in your mind, what would give us the desired result? Well, I'm one what of 435 the... <laughs> people, I and I said, let's be a think tank. It, let me tell you, mm -hmm. if I had the answer to solve this by myself, I don't know if I'd be sitting in Congress. I'd be sitting somewhere else a lot higher. Mm -hmm. But this is a very challenging, multifaceted issue that we have to address, and we all have to look at it. You, you have know? children of your own. Yes. You know, and, and we've had a spate of school shootings. I, when you see that, does it concern you as a father? Absolutely. How could it not? Mm -hmm. This concerns me every time it happens. It breaks my heart. It tears me apart. And you do. You envision your children in that, that scenario. And we did pass the Stop School Violence Act where we, where we were able to harden facilities, increase capability to try and pick things up. There's things that are being done locally as well. There's data collection on, on trying to understand and surveying kids what they think about violence. There's programs uh, like Bully Bully, where someone can report bullying anonymously. Yeah. So th people are trying to take actions on this, and you have to look at every component of this. You know, you can talk about banning something, but a crock pot was used in the Boston bombing. You know, box cutters were used in 9-11 to overtake that plane and then use it as a weapon of mass destruction. destruction. And those are good points. You know, so, so let's be realistic, mm -hmm. let's be fair, and let's be practical and try to get the end result, which is to stop this type of behavior. All right. On that note, we're going to go to break. Okay. We'll continue our conversation with Congressman Brad Wenstrup in just a moment. When we come back, I would like to speak about spending and the economy. Absolutely.